my cousin gave me a compact disc uh, kind of evangelical contemporary music, which is not something I was very familiar with. And the disc was called Revival in Belfast, Irish uh, musicians of the evangelical strike. And I got to like the disc very much, and often like to listen to it in the car. I don't agree with all of its theology, but I agree with enough of it. And one of the songs is called The Lion of Judah. And it holds forth a vision, such as we might get in the book of Revelation. It's talking about the end of the ages, when we are beyond time. And everything is revealed for what it really is. And all the illusions and all trappings have been stripped away. And everything is seen exactly what it is. And the line comes, I'm sorry it's not an inclusive language, but these are even jealous of what can I say. But the line comes, and the eyes of all men shall be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified, for wisdom and justice and power be reigned at the Father's side. The eyes of all men will be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified. The figure of glory, Jesus in his glory, that they will see is the same crucified sacrificial Lamb that he was in his earthly life, glorified. The whole of history will be caught up in that vision, and they will understand that Jesus is the linchpin. His life of complete self-surrender in love to God the Father, and therefore out to all human beings. His authentic life was ratified in his complete sacrifice of his life and God's raising of him from the dead. That's not the way to death. If you just look at the appearances of things, the trappings of things, if you look at the appearances and trappings of things, it looks like might makes right. It looks like whoever has the most money wins. Whoever is the most famous or glamorous or physically beautiful wins. It looks like we should do everything we can, even if it's unethical, to get more than our share of this world's good. It looks like the people who are not sentimental, not worried about charity, but looking out for number one, are the people win. But at the end of history, beyond history, the eyes of all men shall be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified. That the way of Jesus is the way that wins. The trappings, the appearances, are illusions. And we are called as Christians to see through them, to see that vain, the vain search for pleasure without responsibility and love. The search for control. The search for constantly being angry and self-righteous, the search for fame or riches or power, even if those things can be good, all those things can be good in themselves, in the right dose. We're pro-pleasure here, we're pro-physical comfort, we're pro-good health, we're pro-people knowing who you are, we're pro-having your proper say in things, but when they're perceived through the heads of themselves, when we give them the illusion that they're the real thing, our life falls apart. And we are called as Christians to look behind the screen, to look behind the illusion and see what's really there. And that is what happens to the apostles, Peter, James, and John, when Jesus takes them up on the mountain. Jesus has just finished asking them, who do you say I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus makes the promise to him, you got it. You are the rock on which I will build my church. And then Jesus says, by the way, that means I'm going to go to Jerusalem and be crucified and put to death. And Peter says, not so fast. God forbid that happen to you. And just having given Peter all that, Jesus said to Peter, you're a Satan. You're an opponent. You're trying to trip me up and keep me from what God wants. And with that, they proceed on up to Mount Tabor. And the apostles had a vision of Jesus not just as the man they eat with and drink with and walk with and sweat with on a day-to-day -day basis, miraculous and impressive though he is, but in a glorified state, a state that is beyond time and beyond death and beyond decay, a state that is the ruler, that vision upon which the eyes of all men will be fixed, the lamb who was crucified who now reigns in glory. And they see with him Moses, who represents the tradition of the law, of God giving the people of Israel an expectation for how we are to act. And Elijah, who represents all the prophets, all those who pointed toward God's vision for the world and toward 
God's vision for each of us and for the coming of the Messiah. And afterwards, all these pieces of Jesus, he says, all of that's been wrapped into Jesus now. Moses and Elijah are with him, preparing for him, playing a role in his glorified state. From the end, they only see Jesus. At first, they hear that voice from heaven. This is my beloved Son, on whom my favor rests, and whom I am well pleased. In the Gospel of Matthew, that exact sentence was heard before. Anyone know where? The baptism. When Jesus agreed, though he was without sin, to be baptized by John the Baptist, thus going, taking the part of solidarity with you and me, those of us made of clay, those of us with our weaknesses and our sins and our temptations, took our part and went under that water, the water that cleanses, the water that drowns, the water that renews. <coughs> and on doing that, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Paraclete, descends on into the form of God. And the Father says, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And now, as the Gospel of Matthew here to stand, God says it again, and then says, listen to him. And it doesn't matter what it looks like in the daily papers, in the daily news, at the end of time, the eyes 